Hello class, how's it going? Lovely to see you. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mr. Jorgensen and I'm going to be talking about The Secret River, a novel by Kate Grenville. I will be walking through the chapters, talking about some key plot things, not too much though, you should be reading. I'll be talking about characters, themes, and some motifs. Let's do it. Let's talk about the prologue to The Secret River called Strangers. So immediately before we read, we know that this is going to set us up to have some kind of conflict, I guess, the idea of strangers and not knowing what's going on. So we're introduced immediately to the situation. The Alexander with its cargo of convicts, we're aware enough of Australia's history to know that this is set in that colonial time when Australia is bringing, or England, sorry, is bringing over convicts to Australia. There was hardly a door, barely a wall, only a flap of bark, a screen of sticks and mud, and this is the time period we're in. It's the 1800s, there's not much development going on, and there's a lot of, I guess, struggle and strife to actually live in this place. There was no need of lock of door of wall. This was a prison whose bars were 10,000 miles of water, and that's not his home, the prison. It's Australia being the prison, and the 10,000 miles of water are the bars, and I love uh, that use of metaphor there, that it's a prison and the bars of this vast sea. As we move on, we see a few things develop, okay? So when we think about our themes of our novel, and these are just a select few, home and the immigrant experience. So let's have a look up here. So he was nothing more than a flea on the side of some enormous quiet creature. And I think this exemplifies the immigrant experience of Thornhill, that he comes into conflict with nature, with the environment, okay? Uh, as we move on, um, here we see that he's kind of safe in his home, right? He's he's comfortable with where he is, but as soon as he steps out into that darkness, he's in this strange place. He's in a world that he doesn't understand. Um, now, standing in the great sighing lung of this other place and feeling the dirt chill under his feet, he knew that life was gone. And this brings in one of our motifs of warmth, the chill, how that fights against his, his warmth, and that's his comfortable. Okay, warmth for William is what he wants. Um, he cries, um, he's overwhelmed with feeling, um, which shows, uh, I guess, uh, an innocence to his character. As we move down, um, we're going to just talk about this idea here. Anger, that old familiar friend, came to his side. Damn your eyes, be off, he shouted. So this brings in uh, William's character. Um, anger for him is this warmth, and it warms him from the inside, and it's something that he needs in London but he still draws upon when he's in Australia. So he has this conflict with an Aboriginal man. Um, go to the devil, right? He's very aggressive towards him, and his voice conquers this chapter, and I guess the novel on a whole. The mouth of the black man began to move itself around sounds. As he spoke, he gestured with the spear, so it came and went into the darkness. They were close enough to touch. So we don't actually hear any translation of the Aboriginal man speaking. And this is the silencing of his voice, of um, the Aboriginal man's voice, which stands, I guess, for the silencing of Aboriginal history in Australia. And that's a major uh, theme of colonialism, okay, of the silencing of their perspective. And Grenville even writes it as such. Be off, the men were shouting, be off, echoing Thornhill's words. It was his own tone exactly. This was kind of madness, as if a dog were to bark in English. So it's othering straight away uh, the Aboriginal people. And that's one of the themes that carries on throughout, and it plays into colonialism, but in itself, the other and otherness is a specific theme. So learn that there, and in our next video, we're going to look at London. So luckily enough, we're here. Excellent.